initiative. Yep. So back in February in Barcelona, the Development Fund released a research report that highlighted exactly what the gender gap was in terms of ownership of mobile phones by women in the developing world. Um, we saw that, in, especially in Asia, women were up to 27% less likely to own a phone than men. And this really totaled up to be 300 million women who should own phones and have access to the services that could benefit their lives from phones, but didn't. So what we did from Barcelona until we had a launch in Washington at the State Department with Hillary Clinton is work with the industry to come up with a program that first of all can solve the access problem so that women can get phones and that we overcome cultural and financial barriers in terms of access. But then we then move on from that to look specifically at services, working with carriers and working with people like Nokia and understanding value-added services, but very specifically what we have running at the moment with Vodafone is an app challenge to develop services for women at the base of the pyramid. Um, what we're looking for is very creative and innovative um, solutions to the problem in two specific categories. One for feature phones, obviously, especially when we reach the base of the pyramid, lots of phones in these markets are very simple. The biggest technology access you may have is something like USSD. But what we also want to look at seeing as smartphone penetration is increasing massively globally, and this does trickle down as well, is looking then at smartphone applications and saying, okay, if we understand the very specific needs of women as consumers, how do we develop services to deliver on those and to help them? So the first is really access. You know, I mean, a lot of times, um, for, as I say, for cultural or financial reasons, women just don't have access to mobile phones and don't have that sense of ownership. And I think, as we all know, you know, if you have a mobile phone, it is like an extra limb. You, know, you don't feel somehow comfortable if you don't have it with you. And not just because it's a voice tool, but because it gives you connectivity via text to your family and to your friends. But also in the developing world, where mobile is very often the only infrastructure, the mobile phone may be the only access people have to information about farming and agricultural issues, health issues, education services, etc. So not owning a phone and not having that autonomy and that ability to access those services is potentially quite debilitating. 